Hey everyone, Brandflex here. Um, coming back to you with another ranked video. I mentioned in the earlier video that I played three ranked games in one night, so this is the actually the first ranked game that I played when coming back. So this will be a Avenue Star build since I'm aware that a lot of people start hospital these days. So I want to make a different type of build that still really hit Dylan's power points, but you know, it's somewhere different just because everyone hates going to a zone that has five or six people there already. So this is kind of the same idea as one of my older builds that started Hospital. You start an avenue, run through beach, and go into archery range, and just get a lot of decent items that allow you to really spike early and play for the farm game. Um, I, my playstyle in the game in general is fairly low-key. I don't try to go for much early aggression unless I have my, all my items in archery range. Just because Dylan is a pretty good scaler, she does have some pretty good early game power with the right build, and this build does have some decent early game power, but all that aside, you'll see that I am getting a pretty good set of early items. I have my whiskey cola prepared, I have some bread for my hamburgers, and inventory is looking very good right now, but since this is my first run of this build actually, um, <laughs> it's not particularly optimized quite yet, so... You'll see that I go into archery range without that many items when I could easily have four or five or two or three items finished by now. Um, at this point, you can have your sheath of Shah Jahan done. You can have your, um, I guess it's the green, not the green, the blue suit done at this point if you pick up branches. And I've kind of neglected all that because, again, my first time running it, it's not going to be perfect. I also don't have branches for my headpiece as well. And you'll see that kind of bites me in the butt going forward because I do get all my items here, or most of my items here, but I don't quite have that many items completed by the time this Hyungwoo comes by and aggresses on me early. So the main point of this build is to get a lot of early power, like I said, and kind of just have the safety in um, archery range. So we hear the Hyungwoo teleport in. I am here with the wolf spawning, and the Hyungwoo's actually gonna come by and attack me as it finishes these wolves, and which is it's a pretty big deal. Um, I only get one craft in, which is the sh sheath. I want the Shah Jaha, and he gets a lot of early burst damage in. I think about fighting him, but I don't have my Q up from killing the wolves, so I have to back off. If I had my Q up, there's a chance I could have beat him, but unfortunately, uh, you know, I'm just too far behind in HP, and I don't have real food, so I just have to give him the drops from the wolves. And I see a Magnus here that I'm trying to walk away from because I don't have full HP. The Hyamu looks at me kind of funny, and since this is a lower MMR, this is silver, um, people aren't as good with the macro as they should be, so the main reason why I state that is purely because you'll see here that I'm actually going to be able to take these wolves and boar uh, right above me when I really don't have any business getting these items or getting those camps, since the Magnus is there and the Hyomu are there, and the Hyomu is technically strong, was well, technically stronger than me at the moment. But for some reason, I think they've left the zone. I wasn't really sure, but I didn't see any ping, so I am thinking that I'd be pretty safe to take these, especially since I didn't have to, have to use the ultimate to get away from the camp earlier. And so we'll see here, I get all this farm. I'll end up getting the hamburgers here. Just one hamburger though, just for a quicker fight. And I'll finally be able to finish my build at this point. I do see Kathy here, I will be attacking her for some free mastery. I'm not really expecting to be able to kill her because it is a cat thief, she does have her ultimate up, and I'll just be walking up here. And so I finally pick up my branches that I need for my battle suit, and you'll see that a Sua actually pops up and interrupts this craft, and a lot of Dylan players complain about Sua, and I guess this is an early fight, just to show how it's not as big of a deal as you think it might be, so she talks Diamond Shards, I don't get much damage done, she hits a lot of her abilities here, but I continue fighting because I know that she uses her W on herself instead of me. So she hits a lot, but this is all she has because it's an early game Sua. She doesn't have her Don Quixote up to continue chasing me, so I'm allowed to just auto attack her, and then I ult her, and then I finish her off pretty cleanly. And keep in mind that I am technically two items down. I don't have my finished battle suit, I don't have my laced quiver because this build only gets quiver in archery range. And so that Sua probably thought she was favored against me. Uh, but I just played to my owls, you know, continued my aggression, kept autoing her. I got a little bit lucky with the crits there, I think. I do have, um, I did have 20% at the time with Crystal Tiaras, and I think I autoed her around 10 or 11 times, so... I don't think it would have mattered because my Q, uh, my Q after my auto at the end there would have killed her regardless, so... Not the biggest deal. And you'll see that I'm already preparing fish and chips here. I have the... 
uh, french fries from killing the sewer earlier. This Kathy will be jumping on me. I missed my E, so I know that this kill will be happening. And I just take the uh, acceleration perimeters to get out of there. If I hit my E, there is a small chance I would have won, but I don't have my ultimate, and that Kathy definitely does have her ultimate. And you really just have to respect um, burst characters like that if you don't have the burst on your end as well. But that's all fine. I'll just be going along and doing my usual thing of farming. I don't have really good food, so I don't really want to take fights right now, especially without my ultimate being available. <laughs> and school is a pretty good place to be because I get to prep Burgundy 47 at this point in the game, which is a really important upgrade you can get as dial in when Wicklin spawns. And I'll discuss it later, but Wicklin is an objective you really, really want as dial in. Obviously, objectives in this game in general are really important. But Wicklin specifically is something that people aren't quite as good as contesting uh, down below, I would even say the diamond Next level. Uh, about He's above diamond, you might see players actually contesting Wicklin way more consistently. <laughs> but before that, it's kind of 50-50, if even 50-50 at that point, because um, only certain players and characters are really comfortable with <laughs> contesting Wick. Like just straight off the bat on spawn and so if you're there on time and you have decent vision control or you just even understand how Wicklin's pathing and watch the positioning of other players you can often get it for very little uh pressure and so we'll see here i will be completing my fish and chips because fish and chips are a lot of experience um the metagame used to be that you would want to just continue to farm and like really focus on farming but in recent days, objectives and fish and chips are kind of the more popular way. You see that's already betting me. I'm level 11, so this Camille's level 10. And this fight, I don't play particularly well, but I'm just so far ahead, that it doesn't matter. Like, I get hit by his third Q. I'm gonna get hit by his ultimate here, because I greed my ultimate. I don't quite kill him, because he levels up halfway through, and he gets healing and shield. But in the end, you know, this fight will be mine. I see his Q, I see his ultimate, so... If he managed to get his third Q off there, I might have lost due to the healing, but since he was stuck in his ult animation, I knew for a fact that I could just auto him, because the damage reduction for Camille isn't particularly great, and the fish and chips really come in handy there as well, since I have way more healing than he does at this point in the game. If I mouse over it, you see it's 910 or 920 <laughs> HP, whereas most food at this point is only 700. And that fight definitely lasted around 10 seconds at least, so I easily healed like 100 more HP than him, especially since Camus usually do not build healing reduction. So I'll be finishing my Fish and Chips crafts here. Again, I get a ton of experience from this. Obviously, I'm already ahead on experience due to the two kills that I have from... Uh, yeah, from killing people. <laughs> and my hunt is pretty low because I am focusing on Fish and Chips rather than making sure that I'm on top of a hunt. I did make a mistake here. I should stay here for the bears, but I think I got distracted by something else <laughs> happening. Um, see, it is nearly eight minutes, and I think I just wanted to get something else at this point, even though I really, really, really should have stayed for those bears, because those are upgraded bears. They had the chance to drop uh, VF items, and I just walk away for some reason, I think. Because I don't remember killing these bears at this point. Maybe I do. Okay, I actually do kill these bears. Wow, good job past Ram Flakes for uh, being good with these bears. So, you really want to make sure that you stick around for high level mobs, especially if you're in the area. All hail the on for adding the uh, animal timer to the game, just so that it's way easier for you to know when you should stick around and kind of farm these monsters. So, unfortunately for me, I don't quite get the RNG drops that I want from these bears, but you'll see that my mastery still goes up by plus one. Sorry for the things in the background, I'm getting some notifications. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I get some more lighters and oil. I think I got the lighters way earlier from Alley and school when I was there, and the oil obviously is from Uptown, so I'm gonna make another set of fish and chips, which again will really accelerate my level. My crafting mastery and my food, my rather my health mastery are being increased by these fish and chip spam, and it's just really crazy how much experience you get from this. Um, just between getting really high value hunts and making really high quality food, you can really get your level up way faster than you really should be able to in this game, and that's kind of where most of the macro in a turn return is, being able to rotate around the map, understanding when spawn timers usually happen, and being able to make food along the way as well. And some really important details to note is that the bears in Uptown spawned really quickly because people actually cleared them really fast, but it's around 5 minutes for bears, but 
usually can expect them to be available at 9 minutes 10 seconds, which is why earlier I was saying like I'm not sure if I kill those bears because they spawned way earlier than usual. And so you really want to make sure that you're in position for these higher level bob camps. So it's like 9 minutes for bear respawns, around 7 minutes for wolf respawns. Those aren't exact numbers because they can spawn a little bit earlier than that depending on how zealous and consistently people spawn them in your games but in lower elo games people are usually like not as on time with animals as they should be and so while i could go to another zone to farm more animals i do come to omega because i am decently farmed i feel pretty ahead but this other dial does pop up and you'll see even though this dial is ahead of me in weapon mastery i'm actually ahead of her in levels purely because of the two sets of fishing chips that I've crafted. So she actually is scared of fighting me, despite the fact that she is ahead technically on combat power. But base stats are really important in this game, and we'll see that when we make a really small trade here. I miss my silence, which is pretty big, and I think she ends up... Oh, she hasn't landed because her DSC isn't high enough. But we end up trading fairly decently, and I get a lot of mastery from it as well. And because of this, she almost backs up completely, and I end up getting Omega relatively uncontested because she sees the meteor spawning below us, and I guess she wants the meteor instead since it seems less contested. And so I take Omega, and I make a small mistake here where I end up trying to go for auto arms the entire time, and I really should have checked the console at this point because consoles now tell you how many items are left in the zone. And I have the console, so I should have realized that there were no bandages to begin with, but, you know, instead of taking the five seconds it would have taken to walk down to the console and check bandages there, I end up greeting for the boxes, and there are actually zero bandages in the zone. And I know that because after I check, I think, like, 80% of the boxes here, I finally look at the console and I'm like, uh oh, there's nothing here. And so this Rosie's corpse does have a hairband, which allows me to make... Uh, at least in Halo, which is a side grade to Pegasus, and I really don't want to make at least in Halo for the choice because it's kind of a waste of upgraded resources to go for like a very minor upgrade or a side grade, which is what at least in Halo is to Fallen Pegasus, especially since I already have some crit damage in my build through Creed or Knight's Creed. And there's this Tianwu. I make a mistake here. The Tianwu whips his E, so I whip my E. And I queue backwards because I'm playing scared for some reason, even though I really should be queuing forwards because he's already used his most important abilities very early on to the fight. And this is now a mistake that really only happens with lower ELO players. He still goes for the mobs, even though he knows I'm there. And since his E is down again, I'm allowed to just jump on him and get a lot of free damage on top of him, despite really not supposed to be being allowed to do that. And so with that being done, he kind of corners himself, and he takes really poor pathing to escape me. You'll see that instead of running through the red here, he walks up to the corner. I'm not really sure why, so I get the kill for free. He has an upgrade for me in Lace Quiver over the Music Box, which I picked up because Music Box is better than the Green Quiver, but Lace Quiver is way better than the Music Box for me. And again, I keep looking for this bandage that doesn't exist. At some point, I do check the console, but I waste so much time here. We can see on the map that Wickland has spawned. I don't think we can see it. Oh, we can see it on the replay system. So if I was playing way better, I would have gone into Chapel and cleared Wickland in red by walking in this direction. But because of the fact that I'm so intent on getting these auto arms, I actually let Wick walk in, walk around for free. And this is something that, again, really mostly happens in the lower MMR, where I'm not punished for not being on time to Wick because people aren't killing Wicklin on time. I think someone does aggro her here by walking into her trail, but there, I do think people are in chapel to contest it. I do end up teleporting into factory to try and get it for myself, and we do see that I do end up going for at least in Halo, and I swap out my creed for Sheath of Shah Jahan because it is a lot more AP and decent on defenses, and since I no longer have crit available on my build, I just dropped the creed because the extra crit damage is zero value at this point. And I also dropped Bucephalus because of it. So I'm decently fast, I am pretty tanky, I have a really good burst option in Halo, and we see that really come to effect in a second when I end up running into an Alex in about, I think, a minute. So yeah, we see a Dylan running around. That basically confirms that there was somebody in Chapel trying to contest her, and a Magnus ends up walking around too. So I really don't want to take this fight because Magnus and Dylan together make a really scary pair to fight because they both have really good burst options going into third parties. So 
I'm gonna follow Wicklin here, and this is what I mean, again, like, Wicklin as an objective isn't really focused as well as she should be in lower MMR. We see that the Magnus and the Dylan end up fighting each other instead of going for Wick. We see the Dylan walk backwards, even though she knows that Wicklin is going to hospital, and I see that, so I know that Wicklin is totally free for me. So I pop my weapon skill for Frenzy, I use my entire combo, and I get Wicklin. Very little damage dealt, or to me, and I get, like, no one fights me. And so I'll be getting my Wicklin buff, which is pretty huge. I believe since I have the suit already completed, I do get Burgundy 47 completed as well, which is a massive amount of power. Um, While well, I do lose a lot of armor, I think I lost 25 armor there and a lot of overall like skill reduction and basic attack reduction, I get so much more AP. I get more move speed. I also get this shield that really nullifies the fact that I've lost some defensive options and... I make a mistake here. I make a force core with the uh, Tree of Life and Meteor that I have. I should have saved the Meteor for Tears of Selene because Tears of Selene do count as alcohol for some reason on dial in. And as you might notice in my inventory, I only have one Whiskey Cola left. So it doesn't really hurt too much because I am really snowballed. And at this point in the game, people are kind of scared to fight me. So it doesn't really punch me as much as it should. I go into Chapel. Um, mostly because I'm just curious to see if people have left iron ore and mouse traps lying around, and I do pick up rocks for no reason because I'm still under the impression that I have a meteorite. And, you know, I walk towards the water for that same reason. I'm like, oh, I don't have it. I see this Alex, and we'll just release the power that Dalek has late game. I've ordered, I've ordered the Alex three times, and he's already at 70% HP. So you really, really do not need to greed for multiple auto attacks um, when you're this late in the game. I have 280 AP, which they've nerfed Dylan scaling on her Q a significant amount, but I'm still shredding through people with ease, and that just really gives a show how much power you really have as Dylan with any transition items late game. I think the reason why I did that much damage is because of at least in Halo, I did one auto attack which applied the 10% max HP damage and then the rest of my abilities carried the rest through and the Alex wasn't very tanky because he was going an auto attack crit style. And so here, we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit because there's not really much happening at this point in the game. Um, everyone else is fighting amongst themselves in the other temporary final zone because I'm just too strong to fight. And you'll see me run around for a bit. I'm trying to make Hermes because Hermes is way better against the two Magnuses that are available. And yeah. It's <laughs> it's really boring here. There's a small argument that I should have ran up to third party at any point during this two minute segment. Just to like try and get a few more kills. But I really don't want to allow someone to run away to this zone and take it for free. Um, it's a hard decision to make because... You never know if people are going to walk in, you never know if you should have walked over, and since I don't have the console vision, I can't really keep track of that other other temporary zone, but I did get another kill in the Alex for it, so I can't really complain too much. And around 3 seconds left, I do walk into the center just to get a little bit more map presence, and this is and the reason why you want to get map presence at this point in the game is because I am clearly the strongest person here, and so naturally the last two players will want to focus me to take me out so they have a better chance of winning. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and proactively force each player off the temporary zone just so that they cannot see me and the other person at the same time, which really encourages them to hit each other before they hit me. If they both see me and I'm close enough to both of them to hit, they're obviously going to hit me first because I'm just way scarier. So I need to focus them and I need to push them off and use abilities. So I push the Dylan off, put Magnus off, and by the time Magnus walks up, yeah, I'm already in the bush and have his vision. So he actually keeps the Dylan instead. And then Magnus, you see, walks up to me and tries to get the Dylan to help him, but she's already too far away. So they end up fighting each other because they realize they're about to die to my output. And so it's going to be a bit of an explosion here. I body block the Dylan ultimate, take the last kill on the Magnus, and then the other Dylan ends up falling quickly after. And this game wasn't really snowballing by me. I got one kill very early on on the Sua and then another kill on the Cameo, but I didn't have any RNG items for the most part. Uh, I think I got the Pegasus from the Cameo's corpse from the Meteor, but it really just goes to show that you don't have to force snowballing in this game. You can take your time, um, take the fights as they come along, you can make your fish and chips and get a level advantage, go to the objectives and get control over them, and then once you get Wicklin, that's really where you start chasing people down because you're just so powerful at that point. And if you can find 1v1s and isolate people, especially as dial in, your time to kill is so short that you don't have to worry about third parties, you can just run at them, one-shot them, and then move on and reset for the next fight. 
I hope that really helps you guys who are trying to make the final like two day push, I think, at this point for gold, especially if you're playing dial in. I know there's all dial in players because of the new dial in skin. And yeah, I'll be trying to post a few more of these uh, in the next few days just so that you guys can get some more advice when you're climbing. If you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like, comment, and if you really want to see some more content, subscribe. I'll try and get some better edited videos out there. And I hope you guys all have a good day and good luck on your climb. Bye-bye. <laughs>